الدكتور عبد الفوز عن رايال انترناشونال Thank you. 
That's what I'm doing. Chinese food and more right. Yeah. Yes, Tucker Haran. Good. I see the grey hair on. From Kashmir. Kashmir. So I don't go back Kashmir. Oh, now I resident see. in the park. I'm breeding here breeding for resident. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, right, right. See owl. See owl. One minute. One minute. One minute. It's okay. 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 It's 
क्लासिंग करा सर સરસ છે ને ભારતપુર મેં હમણાં सब कुछ खिलाया क्या ज्यादा ज्यादा खिला लिया इसको जलेबी खिलाए पूरी शाक हाँ मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग ब्रेकफास्ट में हाँ अब बैठिए बैठिए short lived city used by akbar the great for just 15 years and after that he never returned back to the city and why the city was used for just 15 years what was the reason it was the main problem was scarcity lack of drinking water there was a problem of drinking water majority of the water which used to be there in the lake dried out because the water was used for the construction by the time this city became a flourishing city with population of over 80000 people the city had to be developed and why akbar chose the third mighty ruler he came here why the reason was akbar when he became the emperor of this country he was a young boy hardly 14 years of age one boy young boy he conquered he consolidated the mogul rule here in this country and to be very precise he ruled here in this country for 49 years but the sorry part of that mogul ruler was he had no son or successor to rule after him and he was near about 28 years old and there was a saint living here in this village and the name of that saint was sheikh salim chishti when akbar reached here that holy saint sufi saint he prophesied he blessed akbar with three sons and why akbar was blessed with three sons one or two or four or ten it took akbar three days to reach to the city that is why akbar he got the blessings of three sons he went back to agra in 1568 and after six months of the blessing the hindu wife she was expecting a child akbar was really impressed by the saint's blessing and he built just one palace out there on top of the hill so that the hindu lady jodhbai she could live under the blessing of the saint the first son was born here in 1569 in order to give thanks to the holy saint he named his first son after the saint's name as salim which later on when he became the fourth mogul ruler got the title of jahangir and he shifted his residence from agra to this and a beautiful city was constructed covering almost 10 square kilometers of an area the four side of the city was surrounded by the wall But here, this city is a city of contrast. If you just go around from the right and look all the buildings to the left, no second building is similar to the first one. Each and every building has a different style, a different concept. Here. And when you read about this city, when you see pictures of this city, the very first building, what they point, what they show of this city, is the building with the four columns over there to the right. and why it's so special and unique because from outside if you are looking at that building it looks it appears like it's a double story building but actually it's not it's a high ceiling hall 
And the second beauty of the building, what you would be seeing next, right in the center, is the lotus seed of Akbar the Great. And why the lotus seed is so important? Because Akbar, Mughals, their religion was Islam. They were Muslims. And think of it, the Muslim ruler sitting on a lotus flower, which is the exclusive flower to the Hindus. Let's go in slowly to see the beautiful work of art on sandstone. But please, again. of the treasury because the three big halls behind it was out there where the royal treasury of the Mughals were kept. Mughals when they came into India they came penniless and why they settled down over here in this country because of the wealth. When Babur the first Mughal ruler he entered the city he was gifted a diamond by his son Prince Himayun and that diamond what Babur has written in his autobiography first of all he named that diamond and that was known as Kohinoor if you heard about that name. Kohinoor means the mountain of light and it was somewhat 220 carats of just one stone. And the estimated cost of that diamond in the 16th century was somewhat two and a half days food for the whole world. And that was just one diamond. The treasury was full of that. And that was a major reason because of the wealth of this country. Mughals, they settled down here in this country. And later, yeah, it's one of all piece of sand from their own joints at all. Their own joints at all. This city played a very important role in the Mughal and Indian histories. A, it was a gap. B, from here, up to the day, mighty ruler, and the mighty ruler had a bit of problems. And the biggest problem in this country since this age is that we have too many religions out there. So it's very difficult to write the masses. In order to write the masses, up to the great, he started a new thing. And that was new thing in Lucky. means the religion of universal brotherhood. He took some good concepts, good ideas from written ways, and started a new thing that was universal brotherhood. And the pillar what you're looking at, it's a marvelous example of his religious stuff. If you look at the designs on it, they are different. If you just get more close to it, and look at the zigzag lines, the arch and the arch, they are all different. And what they are showing, what they are depicting, this is Islamic architecture. Arch within the arch is the Gothic architecture, which was very much here in the 16th century Christianity. A bit of it is Persian, what you might have seen on rugs and carpets, the Persian style. And the rest is all Hindu. And when we say Hindu, you see the birds being carved out. You see the lotus. And to paint or carve any animate object in Islamic architecture is totally restricted. So Akbar, he mixed everything into one and he gave birth to a new faith that was of universal brother. And think of it, Muslim ruler. And the beauty of the structure, the entire palace what you're looking at has been constructed out of 176 buildings. 84, 56, 20, 12 and 4. The topmost is the kiosk where the emperor used to go and used to enjoy the cool breeze of the lake as well as of the view. Unfortunately, the above stories they have all been closed off the musician where he used to sit and used to play different instruments for the emperor. And this sometimes used to be filled up with water to have the same effect what emperor used to have singing in the bathtub. And where he used to sit and used to enjoy the music, the rooms, the chambers, what you're looking in front, those are known as khwab ga. Khwab means dream. Ga means palace, Persian word. So this used to be the palace of his dreams, where he used to sleep. And the topmost room, unfortunately again, that has been closed down, used to be the library of Akbar. Akbar the Great, 16th century, you would be surprised to know, he collected somewhat 20,000 books in his library. Akbar the Great had somewhat 20,000 books in his library, but the sorry part, he was an illiterate. Throughout his life, Akbar, he never knew how to read or write. Not because of its hardness, but because of its softness. And this used to be one of the royal kitchen. But nothing has survived except the bad smell and the bats in there. The bats in here. <laughs> Good singer.
and fortunately it has survived from the 16th century. What are you looking if you turn around the building over there to my right? Here you see symmetry. If you look at the building again to the left, same in iron to the one. And what was the building over there to the right and to the left? The right one used to be the summer palace. And the left one used to be the winter palace. Rather than shifting from one city to another, they used to change from lotus, sign of creativity, and that is Angla, uh, yeah. the water bottle. Water. And the niches, what you're looking all around over here, the purpose of the niches here used to be, they were used to keep the idols of gods and goddesses. But the niches you can see all over in the palaces, out there the purpose was they used to keep the oil lamps. And how they used to provide... Why didn't you have an art in the gym? Light up? Over there, the reason, the logic, basically whenever a mosque in India is made, it is always to the west. It has to face Mecca. And Mecca in India is to the west. That's an active mosque. And what are you looking over there to the right? The white marble structure. That's the tomb of the holy saint, Sheikh Salim Chishri. And even today, a lot of Indians, whether they are Hindus or Muslims, they come here to pay their respects, to pay their homes. To the left, look at the structure. The mighty structure, what you're looking at. That's the second highest man-made gate of the world. And why second highest? Akbar was not having any cell phones at that time, otherwise he would have increased the height of this one. He didn't knew the height. Both were completed in the same year. And the highest one is at Vatican City. Now I would request you to just come inside the two. was the year when the reconstruction of the fort started. Completed in 1573. It took somewhat eight years to be the fort. Akbar's taste, was lacking, he was lover of sandstone, as you guys see from the city. Whenever his constructions were done, it was a dandy of sandstone. Shah Jahan, his grandson, when he came into power, though he was also a great builder, but he was lover of pipe. 
Those of you who have seen the pictures of the Taj Mahal, that's White Marble, and you will be having the view of the Taj Mahal from the port itself. And that's going to be the second highlight. This is created on sandstone. If you just look at the Black Taj Mahal and look at the beautiful carving on sandstone, that's all sandstone. And this palace was meant or used by, again, the most favorite queen of Kabul, Jodhbai, to later on go to the Queen The big halls or the big rooms, what you're seeing all around, these were not the living quarters. The living rooms or the living quarters used to be behind or in the basement. Like the hall, which is in front of me, over there, you see the screen work behind on the wall? That used to be the amusement room. Meant for the ladies so that they could sit or stand behind the screen. So that the person who's performing the show could not see the ladies, but ladies could view the show for privacy. There's a small little room just behind with a beautiful work on. And again, if you just look at the pattern, the style of the building, it's typical Hindu fashion, the Hindu architectural design. And now you're going to see the real contrast. It's done in the 16th, 17th century, bricks and mortar. When you see the Taj Mahal, it's not that the entire Taj Mahal is made out of white marble. White marble is just the face to the construction done, which is of bricks and mortar. And 16th, 17th century, Shah Jahan, he became the emperor in 1627, 1627, and ruled up till 1658, approximately 31 years. And the 31 years of his ruling, what they are known as, he was spreading the white marble sheet all over. This marble is known as Makrana. The reason, the logic, we get this marble from a place called Makrana, which is somewhat 360 kilometers southwest of Kabul. And think of it, we used to get the marble out without any repercussions, without any repercussions. And why this marble was used? Makrana stands to be the hardest surviving marble on this earth. And Shah Jahan, we refaced this palace of white marble. The rooms, the chambers, what you're looking over here, on the three, four side of the garden. These are the rooms meant for the royal ladies of the world. Not for all, but for the selected few. With the Mumtaz Mahal Begum. Mumtaz Mahal Begum was the title which was given to the queen, which means the most beautiful of the palace. The ornament of the palace. And the sorry part of the queen, the two most beautiful things of her life, she was not there to see the two most beautiful things of her life. The first was Khas Mahal, the palace what you're looking in front. And why it was known as Park Mahal? Park means private. And Mahal means palace. This was a private palace, what he wanted to give to the queen. And the construction of the Taj Mahal was started. For the ceiling might have been in its stages. The entire walls, the entire ceiling was having pure gold leaf, which after the collapse of the Mughal rule was all stripped off. Nothing much was used as furniture by the Mughals. We don't have a lot of any sofa sets or big dining tables. Seventies century, what they were having, just carpets on the floor, cushions on the carpet, walls being decorated by pure gold leaf. The four rings, what you're looking, all around. It's brass now. And now, Jasmine Town. Huh? No, 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 it's not the matter of payment. The room popularly known when the, because of this fountain. In this fountain, they used to supply jasmine, perfume, water at that time. That is why it was known as Jasmine Town. And it was out here where Shah Jahan, he was confined in this area and spent the last eight long years of his life. What Agra used to be famous for, what Agra is still famous for, it's the setting of the real semi crystal stones on white marble. That is what I was telling you about. Look at the work on white marble. Nothing has been painted. Nothing has been painted. Those are the real semi-precious stones inlaid on white marble original from the 17th century. 
and how the work was done way back in the 16th, 17th century, it's still being done using the same old tools and equipment which are used in the 16th and the 17th century. And not only just because of the semi-precious stone, this was stone as the costly stone. The walls of it were studded with emeralds, rubies, and sapphires. Not even a single stone has survived from the 17th century. By the Indian Army? This is the Hotel Sharajan. They have made a nice sati of rice. A lot of rice. बाकी बाकी जाए चाहे to your right and left, those were used as the government offices at that time. And what was the need of the government offices? Because Taj Mahal covers somewhat 50 acres of land. To look after 50 acres of land, they needed a lot of money. So they used to get the funds from the entrance to the Taj Mahal. Do 
what we are looking all around over here. They are all together. The real good combination of sandstone with white marble. As I mentioned, the name to this marble is Makrana, which is about 360 kilometers southwest of Agra. And think of it, 17th century, they used to get the marble out without any river connections. Only oxen carts, bullock carts, we used to get the marble out. And what one traveler has written, that each cart used to have some about 22 oxen and 40 wheels used to be there to pull the cart. And when the journey was started, it used to take some about two and a half months to reach to the city. And why this marble was used, why not any other marble of the country? As I mentioned, there are three major qualities of this marble, Makrana. A, it's the hardest surviving marble of the world. B, it's not like Italian marbles. If you have seen Italian marble, the difference between Italian Gorara and Makrana is Italian marble is porous and this marble is non-porous. Liquid water cannot penetrate into this marble after polishing. And Here, <laughs> Tarad It is not possible. Take, take, take. It's a tough one. Chalu chhe. Right, no, but last part is chhe. Take, Stop. One minute. Sneak. Madhu, Madhu. Delhi. I don't know. Delhi. I don't know. Delhi. Sunlight me lijiye ka much Close up design out here Bring the close up Hello, Jiggy. Come on. What is the date today? December 20th? 20? 20th. 1999. It's the first time Jigar is uh, visiting this Taj Mahal. Okay. Come on, Divya. You also. Come on, sit down on the opposite. Okay? Come on. Come here. Okay. Our Chandras bhai gum thai gaya, battery down thai gaya. So go for the to get your batteries. It's nice. Do you get to look at it here? Good. So you can look at the picture. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's, it's still on. Yeah, this is a, a snapshot. You can just press this one so I get picture. Okay. Okay. So we computer my picture. Okay. The, okay. Then, it's already on. Yeah, it's already on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's already on. <laughs> These beautiful inlays of uh, all the minerals. Real gemstone and this all this flowers design.
setting we are from coming out from the Taj Mahal now this is the outside of the Taj Mahal area you can see the bird noise this is the main entrance of the gate नहीं सर नहीं पर तमाम समय जब बिचार नहीं आ सकते नहीं आ तो राज ने खाली फोटो This is the main entrance of the Taj Mahal inside, here in the center line. Say bye bye everybody now. Bye bye to Taj. Hi, Taj Mahal. Bye bye Taj Mahal. Excitement is over. <laughs> Uh, 
અંદર તો આપણે જવાય અંદર થી જવાનું છે જોઈ આવો તમે બરાબર છે બધું પાણી હોય નીકળતું છે તોરો પાણી પાણી હોય નીકળે કરતું છે વારે ઘડી
યાદ કરે છે આપણે દાદાજી ને અમેરિકા લઈ જવાના છે Just only two penny, beta. Yeah. Less than even penny. going college next year august huh? college jese hai sumit ha jo hai ab i apply budhi application kare chhe na acha hai what do you do you want to do doctor doctor very good so this is a straight program yeah. direct medical mole to jao chhe 
યાદ કરતા હતા હા ગુજરી ગયા ગયા વર્ષે એક વર્ષ થઈ ગયો વર્ષ ઉપર થયું દોઢ બે દોઢ એક વર્ષ થઈ ગયો તમને યાદ કરતા બાબુ કાકા યાદ કરે તમને બાબુ કાકા યાદ કરે હા એ પણ આવે એટલે એમના કામમાં બીજી થઈ જાય રાત્રે લાઇબ્રેરીમાં ક્લાસ માંથી આવતા ને દર સાડા દસ થઈ જાય લાલાજી જોડે મૂકવા આવે છે ને અમે કાલે જઈશું બપોરે એવું નક્કી કર્યું બોલવાની બધી વાત તો કરો કમળાબેન આજે તમે મારી આજે વાત કરવાની હા ચાલતો છે ચાલતો છે હા કઈ મોડી દાળ નથી બનાવી હા પછી બનાવી પડે ને હા કઢી એટલી બનાવેલી હા બરાબર છે સવિતાબેન આવેલા છે ગણદેવીથી બરાબર કેમ ચાલુ થઈ ગયું છે બરાબર હવે બાને ગરમ પાણી આ કપડા ધોવામાં પણ આવશે અહીંયા કોગળા કરે તો ગરમ પાણી આવશે ને અંદર ઉપાડ્યું છે આ ઉપર નવું સાવર નાખી દીધું છે એટલે બાય ઉભા ઉભા પણ નવું નવાય 
આ બધા નાણાં બધું ગરમ પાણીના સાવાના કુંડું ચાલુ થઈ ગયું છે આ બા સાવરમાં એ નવાની છે અહીંયા બા ઉપરાસ કરશે 